Terrifier 3 coming out, I wanted to take a second to reflect back on the movie that started it all, All Hallows' Eve. This one really does get lost in the shuffle when compared to Terrifier 1 and 2, it's just not remotely talked about as much. I think a lot of people kind of got on the hype train, especially with Terrifier 2. Terrifier 1 to a certain degree, but because of All Hallows' Eve just having such a loose connection, it's low budget, kind of serving as such an early version of what this franchise would become, and then also just it overall being being overshadowed means that it just doesn't get talked about as much, especially too when you consider that this movie doesn't really seem like it canonically fits in with Terrifier 1 and 2. This movie seems like Art the Clown plays by very different rules, he's operating based on separate motivations, his powers are defined very differently than they become in the subsequent movies. But out of the gate, that stuff is what I really like about it because this movie just gives me such a nostalgic video store feeling. The first Terrifier also does this one really well, but the aesthetic of the movie just really taps into you know, something that I would rent from the video store as a kid, and then be so disturbed by that I'd have to go sleep in my parents' room. Just the cover art, all that stuff, it all gives me that kind of feeling that I would get, and the way that it is filmed also reflects that. It's a pretty basic setup, you know, you have this videotape up here in a kid's candy collection from Halloween. They play the videotape, they see some weird shit. It's nothing exactly unique in the setup itself, but it really is the character designs, how far it's really willing to go. The atmosphere and just some of that low budget charm that I think makes me really resonate with this movie and just enjoy it. As well as the character of Art the Clown, he obviously stands out. He's become a horror icon at this point. So that's the one thing that obviously stuck coming out of this movie. It serves as a really good prototype to Terrifier itself. You see where all these early concepts in the early stages of the movie, where they come from, how they're expanded on, you know, in Terrifier 1 and Terrifier 2. These early ideas that get fleshed out and kind of improve. That's something that, you know, I commend Damian Leone on a lot, is that each movie he takes what he learned from the last time, tweaks, improves, he delivers what the people liked the last time, and covers his basis on weak points that or criticism that he received. And some of that is the genesis of Art the Clown as a character, but honestly he's not even really the main focal point of most of the movie. He's the overarching thing that ties this all together, he's the mascot of the movie, he obviously is the best part of it in the standout, but instead of like with Terrifier where you're following him on a killing spree, He's more of a looming presence in this movie that connects all these stories. They get very weird. You have stories that are cultish and out there, and then you kind of get extraterrestrial. It's just crazy that this movie was actually like basically stitched together with Damian Leone's work, because it really doesn't feel like that. There's some rough edges to it for sure, but that's honestly kind of the charm of it. It really does feel like more of a creative endeavor rather than, you know, just a schlocky project, and even though it's generally beneficial to have different voices when you're telling an anthology story, I think the nature of the connective tissue in this story just benefits from having one singular creative voice. I also think that's, you know, some of the uniqueness of this movie is that it's an anthology movie from one guy doing these stories and connecting them together. I feel like that's not as typical, usually it's just a different director does each segment. That that was the case with the very lazy All Hallows' Eve sequels, but in this case it, it adds to the uniqueness of it and that draw of course of the character. Some of what I dig too is that this movie does have a very surreal feeling. It's some of that nostalgic framing I think that makes me feel that way. And despite the limited resources, I think that they do have some very eerie, kind of effective scenes, compelling, creepy, lingering shots that have become iconic in their own right. They're ones that I think of still, ones that stand out to me. They're images that, you know, I consider to be iconic. Some stories work better than others, you know, some of it kind of doesn't exactly make sense, but it also seems like they're trying to allude to some kind of bigger mystery, the movie is just trying to scare you. I don't think that they thought as much through on how Art the Clown operates, that stuff, and that's fine honestly because they didn't really need to define what he is at this point. They were allowed to just give an air of mystery to him while still showing the way that he operates. It would be interesting to see if they bring any of that connective tissue and 
kind of explain it or retroactively canonize it to the Terrifier movies. I don't really expect it. I feel like they're just going to pick and choose aspects that they want to keep, want to bring forward, maybe give a nod to that original movie. But for what it is, this is a very entertaining, effective movie with a great standout horror character that, you know, would go on to be gigantic. Art the Clown is huge now. A lot of fans. Used to be a very cult horror type thing even when i started youtube although there was a big fan base on the internet and stuff it wasn't really a mainstream thing now i'd say he is he's in call of duty for god's sake but this is overall just a great beginning to what will become a really good franchise especially in horror so i highly recommend it still and that's my look back on all hallows eve let me know what you guys think in the comment section i'd love to hear i'm gm light have a good one